worshiper, I was going to pick Dylan to read the part of the young worshiper in the responsive reading. But he may be helping Kaylee get in and out. So, how about a younger worshiper? <laughs> Who would that be? theme for today is hope and the roles have uh, agreed to come up and uh, read and light the candles hope oh, a certain man will always tell his family that hope is a beautiful word indeed it is God's word is full of hope, and the word of God became flesh in the person of Jesus, the only hope for mankind to be redeemed and reconciled unto the Father. Please let the first hand. In the Psalms we read, For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. And that is from Psalm 62. And Paul wrote this to the church in Rome. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And that's from Romans 15, 13. When Jesus was healing people and casting out demons, he would often tell the person he healed that their faith had made them well. Faith is described in Hebrews this way. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. The woman he encountered with the bleeding disorder that left her suffering for 12 years with no earthly hope of being made well, must have thought to herself, I have heard of this Jesus who has healed the sick, made the blind to see, and the lame to leap. Surely he can heal me if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Her faith made her well. Now as we proceed through this time of Advent, as sure as the sun rises, goodness and mercy will come, but so will troubles and hardships. And all we can do is trust in our Lord and Savior to see us through all these circumstances and carry our hope into a hopeless world. Paul said this to the Roman church who was heavily persecuted. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. And that's from Romans chapter 5. Hope is indeed a beautiful word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rolls. Very much appreciated. 
All right, dear friends, if you all please stand in honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and open your hymnals to, all the way in the back, um, page 854, 854. Our responsive reading is number 11, Glory to God in the Highest. We have a worship leader part, worshipers part, and a worship participant part that Brother John is going to do for us. So, if you guys are ready, we shall proceed. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. The first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So, everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Then Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. There she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in cloth and laid him in a feeding trough, because there was no room for them at the inn. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at the at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace and peace on earth to the people of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our first hymn is on 197. 197, Sing We Now of Christmas. And um, music we have only allots for uh, three verses. So we will do one, three, and five. The song goes rather fast, so <laughs> they, could have, they could have done more. But either way, going with the music. So one, three, and one, five. Three, five. One, three, and five. Darren, go ahead.
this month of Advent and Christmas. We are going to have our time of testimony. Then we're going to have some, some hymn origin stories to, to share with you so we can see how our faith has been uh, passed on from one generation to the next. So before we start, is there anyone that has a testimony that they would like to uh, share with us today? Yes, Glenda. It's okay. Because I'm going to be the children's church. Don't forget that the Christmas party is this coming Saturday night at 6.30. There's a sign-up list on the bulletin board in the back. If you have not signed up yet, bring a gift, wrap the gift, that is suitable for anyone. And the kids under 10 years old bring a kid's gift, and there's going to be separate tables. If you don't want to bring a gift, you don't have to. Just come and have fun. All right. Next Saturday, 6.30. Just join us for, for fellowship and, and, as Miss Glenda said, fun. So, anyone else? Yeah, we have uh, we have the Nebraska family who are with us. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Betsy and Josh and Hudson and Laura. And Hudson, I think, is just laying there on the... Yeah, he's laying there on the... <laughs> So more pieces of the heart are back, right? That's right. Yeah. All right. Amen. Okay. Anyone else? Have something to share? Okay. No one else? We'll get into our origin story, and uh, then we'll sing our next hymn. So if you want to turn while we're doing this to 198, 198, what child is this? <clears throat> so... <clears throat> This song was written, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1865 by William Chatterton Dix. He was working as a manager of an insurance company. He was afflicted by an unexpected and severe illness that resulted in him being bedridden and suffering from severe depression. His near-death experience brought about a spiritual renewal in him while he was recovering. During this time, he read the Bible comprehensively and was inspired to author hymns like Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, and As with Gladness, Men of Old. The precise time in 1865 when he wrote the poem, The Manger Throne, is disputed. While in St. Petersburg Times details how Dix penned the work after reading the Gospel for Epiphany that year, Mark, or Matthew, excuse me, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, recounting the journey of the biblical magi. <clears throat> Singer's Library of Songs, Medium Voice contends that it was actually authored during the Christmas of 1865. We all know the words to this song, <clears throat> but the um, song actually came with the tune from Green Sleeves, the tune for which this text was probably written as one of the most beautiful and beloved melodies of the season. That's an old English um, song if you're not familiar. Though not exclusively a Christmas tune, its association with this season goes back to at least 1642, where it is paired, paired with the Waits Carol. The old year now away is fled. Shakespeare refers twice to green sleeves in his play Merry Wives of Windsor, helping to date, helping to date it in the 16th century. Um, William Chatterton Dix lived from 1837 to 1898. He was an Anglican, Anglican layman, was the son of a surgeon, a surgeon in Bristol, England. He spent most of his life as a businessman, working as a manager for the Maritime Insurance Company in Glasgow, Scotland. We know of his church affiliation only through his hymns that were published in All-Star Songs, verses on the Holy U Eucharist, Eucharist, and a vision of all saints. Hymnologist Albert Bailey notes that some of Dix, Dix's hymns are horribly sentimental, but on the whole says his hymns are simple, reverent, sincere, imaginative, not above the average comprehension, and two of them at least have proved to be continuously serviceable. In addition to what child is this, Dr. Bailey is referring to, as with gladness, men of old, an epiphany hymn that does not appear in the United Methodist hymnal. So he may have been a Methodist. Stanza one. <clears throat> 
influenced by the romantic poets of his day, perhaps skirt the edges of sentiment, sentimentality, <laughs> beginning with a rhetorical question, what child is this? The poet condenses Luke chapter 2, 8 through 16 into a single stanza, painting a picture of a classic nativity scene with the Christ child sleeping on Mary's lap, while angels sing anthems sweet and shepherds watch our keeping. Stanza 2 makes fleeting reference to less than ideal conditions, mean estate, under which the Idyllic scene of the previous stanza, stanza is situated. Like stanza one, the poet begins with a rhetorical question. Why, <clears throat> excuse me, why lies he in such mean a state? In essence, he asks why the Christ child should be in such a humble setting where ox and ass are feeding. The original second half of the stanza, stanza not found in the hymnal when I read it, I wish it were, provide a more complete response to this question. <clears throat> nails, spear, nails, nails, spear shall pierce him through the cross he bore for me and you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. Dix's Dix's answer to the reason for the mean estate which, under which Christ was born lies in his future suffering on the cross. Possibly, excuse me, possibly Dix knew the weights New Year's Carol mentioned earlier. The second stanza of this carol, written over a century er earlier, also alludes to the suffering of Christ. Now, the name day now of Christ we keep, who for our sins did often weep, his hands and feet were wounded deep in his blessed side with a spear. In the final stanza, the poet expands the circle of those attending this humble scene, drawing from the epiphany season and the gifts brought by the Magi. We take our place at the manger, bringing metaphorical gifts of incense, gold, and myrrh. This is a setting that defies the conventional class structures of the time. The invitation the invitation is open to both peasant and king. In a sentiment, in a sentiment that is very common in hymnody, <laughs> the king of kings will be enthroned in loving hearts. Amen. All right, friends, if you have your hymns open to, what was it, 198? 198. We shall sing this beautiful song, What Child Is This? Darren, go ahead.
is uh, she is right. <laughs> Children's Church.